Hi friends! Today is an exciting day. I first looked into casting my own metal flasks nearly a year ago. In fact, very soon after my first metal casting, I realised wood was not ideal. And every time I use my rather worn out wooden flasks for a casting and they burst into flames, I get reminded again. So it would be so cool to have these things made of metal and not wood. Well, now is the time to take the next step from thinking about it to trying it. First, I thought I'd print the sides individually, and these are some of the test prints I did. However, my printer is quite small, so that very soon forced me into the idea of a modular system for the sides, where the parts can be printed separately, then glued together to get the size and shape you want. I've had a good look about for videos on making flasks, and there are a few out there, but none I've seen with a kind of modular aspect. So I printed a few of these, and then I realised that once these parts are glued together into a full flask side, you're kind of stuck with that shape forever. And it might only get used two or three times, which is a real waste considering how long each part takes to print. Each small subsection might be a sort of 8 to 12 hour print. So I started to think about how I could get the subparts to stick together, but have it temporary. So the parts can be reused in different shapes or configurations as you need them. For quite a while I was looking for metal clips on the internet to fix them together and I had no joy. And then it dawned on me that I should just try and print some plastic clips on my 3D printer instead. And that's how this iteration of the modular flask came about. It has 3D printed clips that hold everything together really nicely. And once the clips are in position, they don't spoil the overall draft of the whole pattern. Sturdy. The clips on either side of this piece are special. All the rest are the same. So there's a little piece taken out where these handle or pin pieces go and they just pop in super easy and that is that and you can join them to make larger pieces so I have a bit of a dream and that dream would be for people to be able to download for free of course and print just a few sub parts and then be able to clip them together into whole flask sides of any configuration or length for casting from. And once you've done some castings with it, you'd be able to break it down into its constituent parts again for reuse in a completely different flask design. Now this is a big ask, but baby steps and all that. I feel this could be so good, it's not worth not trying. It may end up being rubbish, but it's worth a go. And it may take a long time, but I'm really excited to start. But here's some pragmatism creeping in. There are a lot of potential problems. This subpart design is definitely not optimal yet. I just made it up. In fact, until I cast it to try it, I don't know if the shape will work at all or even if the modular system can hold up to a single use, let alone multiple uses. So it's just a prototype at this stage, but I think you can see the gist of it. And I thought you'd appreciate the steps and thought processes of how I got here. So as it stands now, there are only three different subparts, and they can be joined in any order or orientation. The advantages of this are obvious, so being able to reuse them would be amazing. Now I'm fully aware how big a goal this is. My main goal is to try and get the parts reusable, but if it's becoming obvious it's not working out, I think it would be great, at the very minimum, to be able to release to the community just a few shapes that could be printed and glued together instead of clipped. It seems many of us have got 3D printers these days, and a simple modular flask pattern, even glued together, would be great. But even this more modest goal still requires a good set of parts. After all, what's the point in making a flask if it's just no good? I think the point of this video is to get the idea out there and to test the viability of the clip system. After all, there's a good chance this version will be utter pants 
and then at the very least I'll see if the pattern is still castable even if I have to glue the parts together. When I designed the shapes I wasn't working to a particular size of flask so it's quite probable that the first iteration is either too big or too deep, maybe not accurate enough, who knows. If I can get the concept and the casting correct then the overall shape and sizes of the parts can be redone in any size. In fact, I would really love to know what depth of drag and cope you guys like best. For me, it's probably 75 millimeters for the drag and the cope, depth that is. But for some of you, that might be too deep. And obviously the deeper you go, the more sand you require. It might be nice to start small and go big later, just to save on printing times during the design and testing phases. These patterns are actually quite big. I based it on a 75 millimeter width to the parts and a sand depth of 120 millimeters, which in retrospect might have been too deep really. Obviously using a slicing program, the X, Y and Z axes can be shrunk to a different scale. So the size isn't so much of a problem, but I'd like to get the shape correct. For instance, the basic shape of these parts with these four ribs might not be optimal. Perhaps three or five would be better. I think casting them will tell a lot about the design and what needs redoing. In fact, I've not cast aluminium for ages, so the casting part of my brain may need recalibrating as I've only cast bronze for the last six months. Also, I haven't given much thought to the way the pins will be attached. I thought I'd see if the reusable modular concept was possible before I start to think about the pin mechanism too much. I was assuming, perhaps incorrectly, we'll find out, that I'd use a drill press to drill down through the handles to bolt the pins together. Here are the printing times for each part in their current form. Now I printed these at 0.1mm layer height with a raft because I sometimes have difficulty with the parts sticking, but there were no supports. And as you can see, they took quite a while to print, so it would be brilliant to get these parts reusable. They all have draft on all surfaces, except those sides where they join their neighbours. So they are the central handle part, which also doubles as the part where the alignment pins will be attached. Obviously it doesn't have to go in the middle, but I'm assuming it would do. Then there's the extension part, and this will be used to make the flask sides as long as you need. And finally, the corner part. I first designed them to be glued together, and it was an afterthought to add the clips to make them reusable. But I think the potential for being able to reuse them and thus reduce the printing time and the sheer flexibility of it could be so good that I think it's worth investigating that side of things first. Fresh off the printer, they all clip together surprisingly well. These 3D printed clips seem pretty good. They can be broken down again quite easily too and seem to go back together well enough, but we'll see when it comes to casting if it works. Also, these parts might not be accurate enough when it comes to joining the four flask sides together. I think this could be problematic as the more subparts that you use, the more inaccurate that side will be. But again, only trying them out will answer that. And here are the clips. There are six clip types. Now, when you first look at it, there should only be two clip types, the larger ones for the center and the smaller ones for the top and the bottom. And it's very easy to print them in groups of three, but there are four extra clip types. And these extra ones are due to the handle pieces protruding into the clip area. Apart from these four special ones, all the other clips between the extension pieces and corner pieces are identical. Also, if the clips on one side don't work well enough because of strength issues or stiffness, I could certainly add a set of clips to the other side too, the sand side. I'd add some more clips across this gap, uh, which would make it very stiff, like incredibly stiff. But I fear it would be so stiff that things would start breaking as, instead of being easy to remove. So let me throw together a quick let's say we want that. So we want we want 
the small end to be three wide and the long side to be four wide. Okay, so let's do the normal clips first. That's the these, these ones. Now we do the final two normal clips, these two. And these four clips are the unusual ones because of these big things here. They've got, uh, it's a standard clip, but it's got a little bit nibbled out to fit. Okay, so there's the small end. There's carpet stuck up in them now. All right, just ignore that. Okay, so I've got my two sides. Also, I have no experience yet on how the final cast parts should be joined at the corners, assuming they even cast well. I've left room for nuts and bolts, but they could definitely, if the fit is accurate enough, be welded or perhaps brazed. In fact, I've got some really cheap low temperature brazing sticks which might work well, but given the low temperature aspect of it, they might also melt during a casting, which would be very bad. But they might be good to join the sides together to help with drilling the holes or welding perhaps, who knows. Until I actually try to do these things, I'll never know which things are rubbish and which things are showing promise and deserve further development. Maybe the clips won't survive the stresses of the mould making, who knows. Okay, well, while explaining it, I seem to have made a decent-ish flask size. There's a little bit of a raft still stuck on that one. Let's get rid of that. The carpet, carpet hairs are stuck to it now. So, I think it's time to try these out. I think this was too long. I think this was too big for my current flasks. So I'm going to reduce it by one. It also, it's also made me realize that perhaps I should make a half with one of these extension piece. That way, if you keep things symmetrical, you've got a bit more flexibility in, in what range of sizes you can make each side. So you've got the double sized clips, the large ones, and they have two little sets of indents that match up with the little indents here. And a smaller clip, which has got one indent on each side, which matches up with these indents here. And they just pop on, like this. And that's it. That's actually very sturdy. Oh, it's freezing tonight. So yeah, that's it for part one. Just the general gist, the idea, trying to get that modular thing working. Uh, I think it would be brilliant if we could just grab a, a few, ST, three STLs off the internet and uh, print them and then stick them together temporarily, make a flask side break it down, make a different flask side, and before you know it, you've got a full metal flask, which costs an awful lot of money in the real world. I'm really excited. I've been printing, you don't know how many hours of printing I've done, hundreds, maybe 300, and a lot of PLA, but it's the idea I love. I love the idea of a modular put together flask because that way just a few parts might be able to serve a lot of people really well. So people might want small flasks, big flasks, very long and thin flasks for like bronze swords. You know, it's basically, because it's modular, it could be very useful. 
Um, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. They may be a terrible shape. The idea might be good, but they might not cast very well. So I'm keen to do that, but I'm going to do that in part two uh, because I've already witted on long enough. And yeah, modular flasks. Bye. Oh, obviously I'll put these files up on the internet. Anyway, part one done. I'm looking forward to part two. I might cast these soon, I hope. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Bye. Oh, if you like this kind of thing, want to see how this project progresses. Um, it could be terrible, uh, but it could be really good. And come follow me along the journey. And hopefully we can all make some awesome flasks out of it. Uh, I know there are loads of other flask designs out there. Uh, not that many on YouTube, I don't think. I've seen a couple. Um, none with the kind of modular aspect, but I urge you, have a think, make up your own flask design, make a video about it. Um, let's collaborate and stick them all together. Uh, this is my effort. I still haven't even cast it yet, but it has potential. I have a feeling everything's a bit too beefy and big. I'm not kind of dialed in yet on what I'm trying to achieve with the sizes of the flasks yet. I'm more in love with the modularity of it, the modular design. So I wanted to kind of test that as a proof of concept first. Uh, and if that works, then I think I will make a more modest version. For instance, this is more like, I think these are too thin, but these are much more like the, the depth of sand of my current flasks, the ones that catch fire, because they're made of wood. Um, but they are a little bit too dainty. These might work as a nice test subject. I think they're probably a bit deep, a bit sort of high this way. Um, but you know, if you're printing something fairly bulky, you need a fairly deep flask. Um, yeah, let's see how it goes. Bye. If you like this kind of thing, I want to follow the kind of progression of if it works, if it's terrible, um, click the subscribe button, click that stupid bell. If you don't click it, and thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you fancy it and see you on the next one. Bye.